of some qida and zalzala that whatever is within Allah will bring out by shaking and testing and, and imtahan. And we described before last Saturday that testing is at many different levels that servant of Allah is always under a test no matter what condition or what position or what station they think they're in, Allah is testing and the test comes to reveal what's hidden within people. And the tariqah path is so beautifully described in Surat Al-Yusuf. As we draw near because we take from the way of Marifa and these 12 hijabs and 12 gates towards reality. But before we take the path of reality, the path of the common, if it can be called common but they'll take from Surah 1 to the 12th Surah. And that 12th Surah should be then describing the hijrah and the hajj. And at the 12th Surah, Surah Yusuf in which Allah describes is a, a, a most beatific story. And in this way of imtahan what the world faces of difficulties is jealousy. And that's why Allah wants people to experience that when you experience interaction with people, experience communicating with people, it brings out a character and the most dangerous of characters from anger and what brings anger is a characteristic of jealousy. Is that jealousy blocks the believer from seeing anything. They don't see the miracle of Islam, they don't see the realities of faith, they see nothing. And as a result of the attributes… Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You know, jealousy, all their bad characteristics begin to come out. So when Sayyidatina Maryam salam, was in her prayer niche, the members of the temple were very angered. One, why is she allowed in the temple? This is not the rules of the temple. Two, that why are you claiming she's pious? And that when she had immaculate birth that no man had touched and Allah kun fayakun, be and it shall be. Even when seeing the miracle of what they knew was the Messiah, they were anticipating the arrival of Sayyidina Isa ibn Maryam, the anointed messenger of Allah But the jealousy that came to their hearts and had existed within their heart, Allah brought it to be seen. So. The, the way of faith 
is not given. And people think, oh these people must have faith, this one must have faith. No, that's not an easy station to achieve. And, and that's the reality that everyone thinks, oh everyone has it and everyone going with these people have it and those people have it. And Allah wants us to understand, no many 99% of people don't have faith. What they do have are bad characteristics and one of the worst characteristics is jealousy. Because as soon as they had a jealousy hidden within them for the station of Sayyidatina Maryam salam, then how could they possibly understand any miracle that was going to transpire at that point? And as a result they became angered, they became violent and they began to cast all sorts of horrible criticisms that, oh look we, we knew something was wrong, how you came back now with a child means they were waiting for something to begin to criticize so that the badness within their heart could be exposed. And that's what Allah means by zilzala because it's quaking. You know there's one zilzala in which the earth shakes and the volcanic fire comes out and burns everyone. Eruptions, the things crash and are destroyed. The spiritual quake is that Allah says, maybe they look good outside people and the presumption is that, oh these people must be pious people, these people must be good people. And then Allah gives a little bit of a test and then begins with Surat Zazzala that she will reveal what's hidden within her. Means that the realities within insan when tested then begin to come out. The horrific nature of people, characters, bad characteristic, bad words, bad examples, bad mouth and this is uh, the danger and this is important to come out before hajj. That the people whom think they're good, when Allah brings out these bad characteristics then they should identify and understand that, no they're not good and they're not making a hijrah towards Allah they're making hijrah towards their bad character. And these are then the realities of zilzala. When Surah Yusuf Allah is giving the example that the eleven holy brothers in a family and each one are imams of their tribe. But if they feel threatened by one beatific brother and the beauty of Sayyidina Yusuf was the gift of light in which Allah had given to him. Not only physical beauty that bothered them but the spiritual beauty of what that, that physical beauty it comes from a inner beauty that Allah gave an immense inner light to Sayyidina Yusuf that described the, the eleven planets, the sun and the moon would be at your feet. Means a maqam and a station spiritually very high and the keys to mess and the financial what they call the, the financial minister of the entire region would be inherited upon Sayyidina Yusuf means from his dunya and spiritual and his akhirah were immense realities and as a result is a beatific light. And that beatific light by the holiness of his father Sayyidina Yaqub is mesmerized by that light. And as a result of his piety, piety and not having jealousy. When the people have a level of piety they're attracted to the gold and to the reality and the light within people like a gold detector. As a result of their level of cleanliness and piety 
Because it's not what people pious through their mouth and what they think they're pious, it's when their entire being's interaction is in piety, not in the words that people train themselves. But in the reality is so pious that it's attracted to the piety of Sayyidina Yusuf and it's not something that can be done intentionally. It's an unintentional attraction what we would call to the Muhammadan reality that when you activate from your soul then other souls that have that reality they have a, a love and an ishq for the Muhammadan light. Means they operate from the kindness of their soul to be in the presence of those lights. What the brothers lacked of their spiritual reality they didn't see that, they didn't feel that, they only felt threatened by His presence. Means that this is then important because even within a family, even within a pious family the bad characteristics still exist because prophets of the Divine and some say, okay they're not prophets but they're the imams of their nation, twelve tribes of the nations of Bani Israel and showing Allah showing that there's nobody excluded from being tested and nobody's granted just perfect character. And it's not perfect because other people say your character is perfect. We say the, the proof is in the actions that when somebody has a pious soft nature they shine in the presence of that light and the love and the piety of other people. But if jealousy should be attached to them and they become jealous, why so many of you? Why so many good deeds? Why so many good actions? Why this? Why that? Means then whatever you do they're gonna find a problem in it. You don't do any charitable they say, oh they don't do anything. When you do, do something they say you're showing off. When you don't talk they say, don't talk. When you do talk they say, talk too much. Means the nature of this characteristic of people is that everything is blocked from them, the realities are blocked from them. The signs that should be normal for people is in the uloom. The knowledges and the haqqaiqs they're not from books, they're not quoted from any author in books. But these are the realities from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad conveyed through a very strong connection to very pious souls. As a result of dispensing these realities those realities speak for themselves. So when Sayyidatana Maryam was approaching these were the religious authority of their temple the highest religious authorities of their temple. So it's always with the hierarchy. So ah, what am I going to tell these people? Say, don't speak, the reality will speak for itself and Sayyidina Isa ibn Maryam salam began to speak. Why? The proof should speak, not you. You no need to defend yourself. The reality in which you are conveying to people it should be proof enough for them if their hearts are good and clean. And that's why Sayyidina Isa talked, not Sayyidina Maryam, oh I was good, I didn't do anything wrong. Don't defend yourself, let the proof speak for itself. That's why it's always tariqahs based on you know your, your faith and your actions. The actions will talk because talk is cheap, everybody going to now use their tongue and mouth in an incorrect way. But Sayyidina Isa salam means the inner reality of this perfection of character of Sayyidatina Maryam salam and the connection to Muhammadun Rasulullah 
Then Sayyidina Isa represents Maqam al Ihsan, right? With the perfection of Muhammadun Rasulullah Sayyidatina Maryam represents the perfection of the soul because Allah is giving the, the best of wives, the best of gifts. What comes? Awlad Salihin is then the maqam insan, ihsan of perfection. So let the state of perfection defend you, not you. Because no matter what you say these people will never be happy, satisfied. They're only satisfied with your death, means get out of the way because jealousy leads to every type of badness and bad character. That's why it's so important for our people to post, post the articles, post into groups, post this, post that. What you're doing is one, you get the barakah of da'wah to show your allegiance with the shaykh, to show that you're the student of the shaykh and that you're propagating the knowledges and the Muhammadan haqqaiqs. And two is to go back and look at the, the exam room that this is exactly what the shaykh is talking about. The why are the characteristics of these people? So negative. If anyone posts within our groups or comes on to our YouTube, there's no aggression, there's no bad character. Doesn't mean you won't be blocked. If they put something vulgar and rude and they'd be blocked. But no aggression, no use of, of horrific words. One, that you don't upset Allah. Two, you don't upset Sayyidina Muhammad and that you don't treat your brothers and sisters in an un-Islamic fashion because they, they love to pretend to adhere to Islamic uh, usul and, and fiqr. And none of the actions match that reality. So means that when you deal with People whom have been taught and trained, they stand guard with an immense discipline. You punch and poke at them, they should not lose their discipline because of their taqwa. They've been trained to have a fear of Allah, you want your heart to open, you want your spiritual vision to open, you don't ever become wild. But when people have not been trained and the danger is their… the ignorant of their ignorance. That's when the lunatics are controlling the asylum. Each one flew over the cuckoo nest person thinks that he's running everything and that he knows he's a student, makes all sorts of ridiculous titles for people and he himself doesn't even know himself and when tested brings out all these horrific characteristics, from their mouth comes slander, comes backbiting. And they say that if you kill a man, the punishment of killing a man is, is one crime. If you backbite a man as if you killed him one thousand times. And that the repentance and if you ask Allah for forgiveness for going out and slandering and backbiting. Allah will not grant the forgiveness until you ask the person that you backbited for their forgiveness. It's such a grave and bad sickness, bad punishment, bad sin, it means it's not something small. So as a result of that those should not be the characteristics of supposedly pious people. And that's why and this is the month of zalzala and just immense amount of testing right before an immensely important hajj. And that's, that's important for myself and for everyone whom listening and taking from these teachings. This is not a way of, of popularity where we do what we gotta do and 
everyone's going to thank us and we're going to feel very popular and great and you know big uh, conferences and no this is the way in which to put our faith in action. This is our battle, everyone must take their sword and they put their faith in action. Means do what you've got to do to see and, and to get your faith to be in action. You cannot sit and stand by and just say, one day Allah will purify me. No, every day is a struggle. Struggle to put out the good word, struggle to have good character, struggle to keep going in the face of every darkness and every comment. Because the darkness wants only everything to shut down. But what would the world of light want? Even if you have but a, a match, Allah's requirement, you know for the, the rules of jihad you have no right to retreat. So the great jihad is the one whom fights ignorance. So ulama or alim or someone who studied with an alim, they are mujahid, they are fighters against devils. They have no right to retreat, they have no right to cowardice. When they stop acting, stop teaching, stop spreading, it's cowardice. In which Allah will ask him, what? What's this? How can you face Sayyidina Muhammad because something was unpleasant to you, you stopped it? He said, no, that's not the rule. This is our fight that they say the pen is more powerful than the sword. What do you want to hit somebody on the head and what happens to them after that? You, you can't do anything with them. But the might of the pen and the might of knowledge, <coughs> what we said qalam, <coughs> qaf, lam, meem are the main letters, qul ya Muhammad means the shaykh's tongue is a qalam, the students who write is a qalam. The propagation of knowledges is a qalam and this pen must keep pushing forward, never stops. Doesn't matter how dark and how bad, that's why they said, then read the history of awliya. Since we are students of awliya, we're not saying ourself is awliya, we're saying we're nothing, we're Abdul Qurajis. But if you study from awliya, you learn from awliyaullah, then you have to read the lives of awliyaullah that they never stopped. They were continuously harassed by the kings, right? The king can kill a wali but a wali cannot fight back a king because the king is higher for earth and you have to obey the amir. But doesn't mean that the teaching of awliya would stop. Because the kings would go out and do whatever they want and come back to the shaykhs and say, stop teaching this, stop teaching that. You're making me angry from these teachings. They continue to teach it and then they were killed. But alhamdulillah that Allah put us within the west to be safe from them. There's a hikmah of why Ishraqiyoon and why the reality would rise from the west? Because of safety, safeguard them. And they continue to propagate over the ocean in the other direction. People like it, they don't like it like a horn, it's going out, it's going out, it's going out. It's a Muhammadan haqqaiq, it's the way of realities. The way of tafakkur and contemplation, all of this sickness because the people don't contemplate. 
For how can a people who connect their heart and contemplate and make this holy connection, it's not a two second you say, I want to connect and it connects. It's a continuous process of fighting yourself and sitting and to be muntazir, to be ready. You sit and struggle against yourself that I see nothing but darkness, yes, and what do you think you're going to see in the grave? Resolve it now. You're not patient for it now? How are you going to be patient in the grave when you enter into darkness? You're not just close your eyes and you're in paradise. You're supposed to sit through difficulty, you're supposed to test yourself with patience. You're supposed to keep making the connection and crying to make the connection. Make your salawat, make your zikr, go out and do your charity so that Allah the servants should feel they're at the doors of paradise. The doors of Sayyidina Muhammad and they're knocking, every day they knock, every day they knock. Nobody said that you knock and it opens for you, this is your bad character, who are you to, to think like that? You knock a lifetime that every day I'm knocking and I go out and do better and then we come back tomorrow I'm going to knock again. And then a knock again. And this is the great fight that Prophet was describing Jihad al Akbar that you fight yourself, not the people. Why is Akbar? Because Prophet now unveiling myself. It's nice when you walk with me and you feel that you're in paradise and reaching realities, means with the leaving of my body and veiling myself from this dunya you're going to struggle to see me. And there's a people all the way in the last days they would do anything to get one glimpse of me. They are the ones who love me and I love them, they're ashiqeen. It's not an easy station, this is the whole way of tariqah. If you're not interested in this, you shouldn't be taking tariqah, you should be just going for Jummah, why wasting your time? The tariqah is based on tafakkur, based on those whom sit and struggle against themselves knocking every day, every day. Why knocking every day? Because Allah says, not today, something still is needed from you. And they go back and they think, I have to do more charity. I have to do more khidmat and service. Maybe I was too angry today, my character was bad, I'm going to come back tomorrow and knock. Istiqamu fi tariqatit when Allah described in Ayatul Kareem, think in Surah Al Jinn and the 72, that they're firm in the tariqah, Allah hold firm into the tariqah and I'm going to shower water in abundance upon you because one day you're going to knock. And Allah is going to dress you now from realities that you are now worthy of entering through this door. And they know how hard they, they, they worked on themselves to knock on that door. As a result they don't have the wild dog characteristics of these people. The backbite and slander and, and say horrific things, post things in their own names, defaming a shaykh, defaming everyone. Because these are dogs from the other side of the door, not inside the heavenly kingdom. That these bad character people, they're on the other side of the fence, they're not in the kingdom. Because the rijal, they sat and kept trying, kept trying, knocking on the door, working on themselves, purifying themselves, cleaning themselves. And as a result that door opened and said, enter in. And if you enter into that association they hold you to a much higher standard. That now with your connection into this world of light then uphold our policies and our way, uphold the world of light's system in which you analyze yourself, perfect yourself to the best of your ability. 
you're living in certain regions there's no way you're going to be perfected and Allah doesn't require it of them anyways because Allah said, I will wash you and cleanse you, don't worry about that. Keep the goodness and love and kindness. <clears throat> if I wanted you to be so purified I would have put you in the middle of a cave in the desert. The big challenge is I put you in a candy store, don't eat the candies. And as a result Allah washes and cleanses the servant because they say, well how is the best we're going to do? You turn TV on there's horrific, you turn this on horrific, you drive down the street is horrific. It's not about that, it's about the servant whom tries to struggle and clean themselves but have good character, loving character, humble character, kindness in their character, khuluqul azeem in which Prophet that Allah sent me to perfect character for if, if you should become of a good character person ittaqullah wa alimukumullah. Allah said, I will be your teacher at that time, don't worry. You didn't need to sign up for all sorts of university courses and nothing. If you take the university of good manners and good character I will be your teacher and my angels will sit by your side and keep teaching you. And we shared a hadith, not a hadith, one of the teachings of Sayyidina Abdul Qadir al Jailani from Mawlana Shaykh's Hisham's site and people in which he describes for people, the Prophet came to me and blew seven times into my mouth. And these were knowledges and realities that were coming and opening. And then Imam Ali came and blew into my mouth five times, seven times. But this is the example from that other side of the world of light in which if Prophet wants to bestow upon a servant that been tested and tried with good character, as a result these uloom and knowledges that come are fountains overflowing, fountains overflowing. We said before that if they inherit from Imam al Hussein from the 12 tribes of Bani Israel that means there are 12 Imams of the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad from the family inheritance. One of the Imams, Imam al Hussein salam has fountains flowing upon this earth. They think they killed him but they killed him not. There's no way to kill that light. You made him more powerful and his holy soul is always upon this earth illuminating the hearts and souls of the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad, his, his grandfather's beloved nation. Means there are individuals that carry that Musawi tariqah from Qazimi tariqahs, I mean the people whom carry the lights of the Imams of the nation, Husseini lights. Means throughout our Islamic history many are known from the tariqahs. I think Al Alvi in Pakistan they have a relationship to one of the Imams, Musawi they, from Imam Musa, Husayni they, they inherit from the Husayni lights. Means these are not things that were a thing of the past and one man walks the earth holding everything, that's Sayyidina Mahdi But the nation has 124,000 servants of Allah that have khususan, have specific lights and tajallis. From them there are inheritors from the imams of the nation in which they carry the lights of those imams and the realities and the fountains flowing from their soul that can't be turned off and there's no book that can contain. If you just start writing each book is 500 pages and it takes years just to make one book. It doesn't end, it's not, a, it's not something that somebody got from a book here. This is an inheritance from the light and, and the souls in the world of souls. That's why the tariqah and the 
Islamic chivalry was based on manners. A people in which they were raised with manners, why? In case they came across one of these lights that could be hidden in an official capacity and most likely unofficial capacity. It's only with the good manners the Sayyidina Yaqub had, good manners, good training that he could witness that light within his child. Not even be jealous of his own child and his own station that what you will achieve will be far greater than me and that when he saw him at his station he made sujood and kissed his feet. Where are the Wahhabis now when if you stand up for respect they anger with you. When in Qur'an Allah describes His Prophet made sujood to his other Prophet to show ihtiram and respect. Why? What ihtiram and respect? that his station was so immensely high because he had good character. But his sons didn't have that, no matter who they were they didn't have that. All they could see in their brother because the father was pious, but all they could see in their brother was making them jealous. They wanted to kill him, they threw him in a well hoping they could hide him or destroy him. But Allah had other plans. This is now from highest level. Imagine now on earth when people don't know, oh, uh, Allah is describing the Prophets are like that. Don't think your groups are not excluded, brotherhood, no brotherhood, whatever you want to call it. If people have jealousy they can do very bad things. It requires people to have good hearts, good loving hearts, making connections all the time and in their connection to feel the lights of people and feel the potential lights of people that these people have a potential to read their, reach their realities. And we described before, be like the sun because only the sun can sweeten the vegetation, right? Because the shaykhs are like moons, they're going to raise their students and teach them. And the sun's role is to come out and sweeten the fruit and sweeten the flowers. So alhamdulillah Allah has a system in place, we pray that Allah give our students a firmness within their heart that promote, promote for the sake of the barakah of promoting. And then promote, go back and look at the comments to see how fortunate you are. If you're being trained you say, SubhanAllah Ya Rabbi Shukran that you sent me to be trained. In our zawiyas, in our associations, you know the parents only know how good their children are is when you uh, let the wild children in. The children from other associations that come in like wildlings running all over the place, touching everything, smashing everything. Then you understand, wow look how much our children are disciplined and trained. That they sit, they're drumming, they're making salawats, they all know the salawats, that's training. And you only know that you've been trained when you compare yourself with people whom are wild. So we would go to the, the masjid and you would see the people from the masjid, their kids were all over the place screaming, yelling all sorts of appearances. So means then this is Allah's barakah, this is Allah's ni'mat and that's also done for the people at home when they sit their children down and the children are taking notes, they're gaining a discipline, a knowledge, a reality. They ask about the realities of Prophet We have a video on how to drum with the azan made and they made a nice production of that. Alhamdulillah so, so many children can begin to start to practice and learn their disciplines and their practices, so alhamdulillah. Again the proof is always in our actions. We pray that Allah grant our actions to be strong and be pleased with and that Sayyidina Muhammad to come across our actions, any imperfections, to ask Allah our forgiveness on, on our behalf and that Prophet to be pleased and pray for our, our goodness for ourselves, our families and our communities. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifun wa salaamun al-mursaleen 
Velhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin ve hürmeti Muhammedin Mustafa Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Sûreti Fatiha. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Sheikh Nurjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. Inshallah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.